Classroom of the Elite Season 3 Episode 5 is here, finishing off Volume 9 with an episode that truly undersells the depths of Ayano Koji's galaxy brain plan that will leave you speechless. And honestly, in my opinion, also fails to deliver the message about guilt and self-acceptance that Kinugasa was trying to convey through Ichinose's character. So, I'm here talking about all the cut content for this episode, ranging from things such as Class A and D, straight up throwing hands with each other, to going over just how insane and well thought out Ayano Koji's plan to save Ichinose was. Also, stay tuned till the end of the video for my review slash borderline rant for this episode. Of course, feel free to skip that section if you're here just for the cut content, especially because I'm probably going to be quite harsh on the anime as a massive fan of the light novels. With all that being said though, let's dive in. So, the episode starts by skipping the second half of the class drama scene, where we see Hirata coming to the class, trying to get Yamauchi to shut up and reassuring the class. We also see Sudo approaching Horikita, asking if there's anything he can do to help the class, displaying the stark contrast between him and Yamauchi, who were both equally hated by the rest of the class at the beginning of first year. Now, Sudo is working hard towards making a good name for himself compared to Yamauchi, who has not changed at all since the start of the school year. We also learn that other classes are also being targeted by the rumors as well, and Class A is the only one without any rumors, naturally leading everyone to suspect them. Moving on, we have yet another cut scene where we see Horikita and Ayano Koji meet up with Kanzaki, and they talk about Ichinose and how she hasn't been coming to school, which is a really big deal in the LN because their final exams are about to start in just a few days. The three of them also get approached by Arisu along with Hashimoto and Kamuro. We see Kanzaki trying to interrogate Classy about the rumors and another skipped line from Kyu which really annoyed me, and that is, Ayano Koji saying that even though he's not interested in the class conflict, he is worried about Ichinose as a friend, along with him alluding to his plan. Also side note, but rip Kanzaki for getting literally every single one of his scenes skipped in the anime. Moving on, we have yet another skipped scene, which is a call between Ayano Koji and K about the rumors regarding them. Though it was mostly more Sundari K fluff content, which is definitely nice, but I can see why it didn't make it. And now we finally have a scene that did get adapted, which was the confrontation between Class A and D. But boy oh boy, do they cut out a lot from this scene. Starting off, their confrontation actually took place outside the school building in an isolated place. Second thing was Hashimoto, fully prepared for a fight because he brought Kito along with him. Next up, we learned about rumors that Nagumo is willing to let physical fights off the hook easily, which was something I talked about in the cut content for episode 3, so feel free to check that out. Then we move on to an actual brawl, which starts by Hashimoto going into Keiki Shizaki, which gets stopped by Akito, who is there to try and stop them from fighting. Eventually, Ibuki also starts throwing hands as well, along with Ishizaki, going 2v1 on Hashimoto. Also, Akito was such a badass in this scene, though he does eventually get restrained by Albert. The fight eventually ends with Hiyori begging them to stop, and Hashimoto saying that, if Class A was the one who spread the rumors, they would not have left their class alone in order to not make them the prime suspects. Also an interesting fact is that, as they're leaving, Ishizaki says to Hyori, why did she ask them to come with her if she was going to stop them anyways? Which surprises Hashimoto because he never expected Hyori to be the one who initiated this conflict, especially because none of the rumors were about her as well. Also another thing to note about this scene was, Kiyo getting a look at Ibuki's student ID, which falls to the ground during their fight, and something about the ID manages to catch his attention. He also ends up asking Manabu about it during a call they have later on. During the call, Manabu also lets Ayano Koji know that the first year might have another special exam, which wasn't the case for previous years. Now we move on to Ichinose finally coming to class and Arisu confronting her. Surprisingly enough, this scene was mostly the same as the LN, aside from it being way less dramatic and a few small cuts here and there, which was also the case with Ichinose's backstory up until Arisu and Ayano Koji's bat. 
Though one major difference is that Arisu and Ichinose's entire confrontation was being narrated by Kyo, and he also says that Arisu's plan will fail because he broke Ichinose before Arisu could. The next change scene is rearranging Ayano Koji going over to Ichinose, which happened at the end of the volume in the LN. In the LN, instead of Ichinose flashback, we actually get a Kushida flashback, which shows the first time Kyo made the deal with her. We see Kushida coming over to Kyo's room late at night. This is also where Kushida hands over chocolates to Ayano Koji. Their conversation mostly revolves around Kyo trying to convince Kushida into giving him information and reassuring her that none of the rumors will be traced back to her. Kyo also calls out Kushida recording their conversation through her phone because he noticed Kushida being really careful with her words and not showing her other side with this freaking cool illustration which sadly did not make it into the anime. Also, Kyo intentionally leaves out blind spots in his plan in order to make Kushida think that he's not perfect and can make mistakes as well. And it was actually Kyo who made the deal about giving Kushida half of his points until graduation. The anime made it seem like Kushida cares about money for some reason, while in the LN, Kushida is one of the richest people in the class because of how many points she managed to get from the cruise ship special exam. Naturally, Kushida thinks this is a lot of points just for some information, to which Kyo answers that it's a reassurance and says no matter how many points Kushida has, it's still gonna be useful later on considering you can use points to save yourself even from expulsion and tells Kushida to stop trying to expel him. Naturally, Kyo doesn't intend to get exploited by her and the only reason he did all this was to see just how much information Kushida has and to make a plan in order to expel her. Also, Kyo says that Kushida can make a contract or something if she doesn't trust him, to which Kushida pulls out a second recorder which recorded their entire conversation. And now we finally start seeing Ayano Koji's insane plan, which started as early as the Valentine's Day. Starting off, Kyo knew that he was being stalked by Hashimoto every single day and said that if he wanted to do anything, he'll have to get Hashimoto's eyes off him first, and he plans to use K in order to do that. During the night before Valentine's, Kyo knew that K was gonna give him chocolates, so he purposefully turned off his phone so K wouldn't be able to meet with him early in the morning and she would have to meet with him around the time Hashimoto stalks him. Also, the entire talk about Ayano Koji being a middleman to deliver the chocolates was also a part of Ayano Koji's plan making Hashimoto think that they are trying to hide their secret relationship, which made Hashimoto think that he learned about one of Ayano Koji's secrets and he decided to stop stalking him for now. And now that Hashimoto was out of the picture, Kiyo could finally start making his moves. First up, he met up with Hiyori at the library, which was also a part of his plan. He would eventually hint to Hiyori that Classy might start targeting other classes as well. Then, he intentionally left out Class A and chose Ibuki and Ishizaki when deciding to spread the rumors, because he expected both of them to confront Class A since they get triggered so easily. Next up, he chose Kiriyama to post the rumors with his phone. Kiriyama had his doubts about this plan because if it gets traced to his phone, the student council might lose its credibility, to which Kyo replies, isn't that a good thing, since Kiriyama wanted Nagumo's downfall. Kiriyama said that if they did find out, he'd be the one who gets punished and might have to leave the student council as well. And Kiyo gives him a solution by saying that Kushida made contact with Nagumo and he can use that to spread a false narrative that Nagumo was the one who got the rumors from Kushida and he wanted to use those rumors in order to save Ichinose, who is a part of his student council. And now we finally have Kiyo going over to meet with Ichinose in the LN. Around a week before the exam, Kyo goes to meet with Ichinose, though Ichinose hasn't been letting anyone into her room, so he doesn't manage to get in, but he sits outside her room in front of the door in order to talk to her. And he comes back and sits there every single day during lunch break, trying to get her to talk. Two days before the exam, Ichinose finally responds by asking him why doesn't he say anything to her. Why doesn't he ask her to come to school or asking her what's wrong with her? And Kyo replies, It's because his ability to connect with others is limited 
and if he tried to appeal to those emotions, it just wouldn't work with Ichinose. He then says he's waiting for Ichinose to unload everything herself and the fact that he knows about her crime. In the LN, it wasn't as dramatic as Kyo being silent the entire time, then saying a few words, then Ichinose having a mental breakdown like the anime portrayed. It was much more realistic and felt somewhat genuine. He even says to Ichinose that he doesn't know the full details and he'll stop asking Ichinose if she doesn't want to talk about it. And we get one of my favorite moments of the entire series. Even though Ichinose can save others, she doesn't have the power to save herself. That's the kind of person she is. And that's why I am here. Seeing Ichinose like this, Kiyo is reminded of other students from the White Room saying that they wanted to let their emotions out but they had no outlet which left them broken beyond repair. And then drops one of the best lines in the series telling her that he's her door right now and no one will make fun of her then finally asking her what she wants to do. Ending in a wholesome exchange between the two before she finally tells Ayano Koshi about her past while softly crying. And the volume ends with Ichinose giving Ayano Koji Valentine's chocolates, which feels way more deserved in the light novel compared to the anime, though in the LN they both also get approached by Nagumo. Ichinose says that she knows Nagumo was the one who told Arisu about her past, but she doesn't hate him for it because it allowed her to grow as a person. Nagumo on the other hand doesn't look too pleased because Kyo thinks Nagumo wanted Ichinose to break so he could be the one to build her back up again as a pawn, glaring at Ayano Koji and being more suspicious of him. And with that, we finally covered all the cut content for this episode and now, the next part of the video is going to be my review slash borderline rant, so feel free to skip it if you're not interested. This was my least favorite episode of this entire season. I know lots of anime onlys and even a decent amount of light novel readers found this episode to be pretty decent, but personally, I felt like this episode missed the mark during some really great moments. First up, they never even show Nagumo telling Arisu about Ichinose's past, people are just left to wonder where the hell did Arisu get all this info from. Plus, it's really important for Nagumo's character moving forward because he's the one who gave Arisu permission to break Ichinose so he could turn her into one of his pawns. Ayano Koji's entire plan to deal with Nagumo, get info on Koshida, ban rumors and save Ichinose all at once was completely glossed over along with his contract with Koshida. This was all basically the highlight of this volume and the lack of Ayano Koji's monologues really hurt the anime as usual. And the final thing that really pissed me off was the anime making everything way more dramatic. The entire point of Ichinose's backstory was the fact that it's not a big deal compared to the anime making it seem like she had committed a murder or something. The whole point was that shoplifting wasn't a big deal and Arisu was preying on Ichinose's nature as a genuinely good person. As Kyo himself says, there was no crime committed. Ichinose's mother took the proper measures to return the stolen item and apologized to the store. Ichinose did make a mistake, but she did not commit a crime. She was being held down by the guilt of a crime that she did not even commit. And the way they handled Kyo and Ichinose's conversation just really annoyed me. But yeah, that was my rant going over why this episode annoyed me. If you're an anime only, please don't feel like I'm shaming you guys for liking it. In fact, I'm genuinely happy that some of you guys can enjoy the story despite it being so rushed. At the end of the day, these are just my grievances as a passionate fan of the light novel, so don't take it too seriously. With all that being said though, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing for more Classroom of the Elite and just anime content in general.